Welcome, friends. Good to have you with us. Welcome, Lou. How are you? I'm very good. Episode 99. Exciting. Episode 99. Yep. As we, as we approach 100. Yes. So, friends, what we, Lou and I, were talking about is what to do with episode 100. And we had a lot of thoughts and ideas, and Lou had a lot of thoughts. I, I, please go back and listen to episode 98 if you haven't already, because I don't want to repeat myself. But I just want to say that Lou has been a phenomenal uh, asset to me in putting these uh, podcasts together. And Lou had some suggestions of what to do for uh, episode 100. And certainly your ideas are most welcome. But I thought that what I would do is something that really made a lot of clarity in my mind when I understood what consciousness was all about, what, who or what God is, Brahman is, uh, what I am, what my Atman is. Uh, when I die, what part of me leaves the body? Where does it go? What is heaven? What is hell? What is sin? What yeah. is karma? That's probably devote one whole hour to this con these concepts in uh, next uh, episode, episode 100. And I hope you'll join us. What do you think? Yeah, Lou? I'm looking forward to this because we've uh, gone through the, the scriptures and the Gita here, and we've learned a lot. We've absorbed a lot. And we're all sitting with questions. So having a deeper discussion about these, especially with you, and this is what I love about this series and your um, talking about the Gita is that you have this uh, psychiatrist mind and you're an accomplished person in the Western world, in the Eastern world. And uh, your context on this is really important to me and I'm sure to our listeners. So hearing more about that, I think is going to be very interesting. Yeah, thank you. There are many, many very learned people from whom I've learned and from whom all of us can learn even more. Uh, like I've often said, I'm like a kindergartner or first grader. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it takes one to learn from somebody who's junior, like a kindergartner. You can learn much easier than sometimes if you listen to really esoteric or deep thoughts from really accomplished spiritual people, because it might be a little bit harder to understand. Right. I know I've listened to a lot of swamis and I cannot understand some of them. Sorry, Lou, you were but saying with something. your practice of psychiatry, you've come at this from a different angle, which I'm interested in how that um, how that gives you a different view on this. Plus, again, as a Westerner, you're very you're familiar with us, so you put it in a way that that I can deal with it. That that mm. that you know you understand my preconceptions and my background. So, and all of this has been easier for me to um, understand based on the fact that you understand Westerners as well. You understand mm. you know my mm -hmm. background and where I'm coming from. It. Yeah. Yeah, I, among the first days that I came to this country and was training to be a psychiatrist, my teachers told me, listen, this is a whole new culture from India. Yeah. And you have to understand what this culture is. You have to get to know it in order to be a psychiatrist, because otherwise you're not going to be successful. So I had to learn what is important in this culture, the Western culture to Westerners. So mm -hmm. that was a benefit. So. Today we're going to be doing chapter 9, verse 21. I uh, would request that you listen to uh, episode 98, which was verse 20, so that you have some kind of a flow as to where we're going, so I don't have to repeat everything. Right. Verse 21 says, They, having enjoyed that vast world of heaven, their punya being exhausted, they re-enter the world of mortals. Thus, abiding by the injunctions of the three Vedas, desiring objects of desires, they attain the state of going and coming, going and coming. So what this is saying is what we closed with last time in verse 20 is that a person does a lot of good things, selfless things, sorry, unselfish things. They're selfish, unselfish, and selfless. Mm -hmm. Selfish is all for me, me, me. Unselfish is less me, lot less me, but more for other person. Selfless is zero me, only for somebody else. So most of us are not selfless, but most of us try a little bit to be unselfish. The person that goes to heaven is very much unselfish. unselfish. He has done a lot of good things, a lot of punya, but mm -hmm. when that punya is exhausted, 
he comes right back down to the world of mortals. And he keeps going and coming, going and coming like that. He does good things, he gets up there, he dies, comes back down to the world of mortals. By the way, this going and coming, born, die, going up and coming down, up and down, up being heaven being up. It's just a philosophical, just a psychological kind of thing that you tend to think of heaven being up and hell being down. Right. There's really no such thing. Um, it's all futile, dying. And they say that we've been born and died millions of times or infinite amount of times already. But the game of chutes and ladders here in this country, it's called chutes and ladders, where you go up a ladder, you go to the top, then right. you get eaten by or you fall into a chute and you come right back down and you go up the ladder and you come down it's a game i don't know if you've played it in india it's called snakes and ladders oh that's right yeah historically this game was invented from what i understand in india and this was invented by those who wanted to teach the young ones that you do good things and you go up and you do bad things and the snake swallows you the snake of desires and you come right back down to where you were before. So that's the snakes and ladders. Yeah. So selfish being catering to your own desires, just to recap, unselfish being less selfish and more to other people and selfless having no desires at all. So that brings us to the concept of what kind of deeds are considered unselfish and what should one be doing? So typically, most people say that um, I donated money. Now, donating money is one form of karma that mm -hmm. you think is good. And I'm not saying it's bad. So let's say you give somebody food. Because what does money do? Money buys you either food or some kind of comfort that is for the five senses that you have. Right. That's all. Money cannot buy you happiness. Isn't there a song like that by the Beatles? Well, money can't buy you love. Money, money can't buy you love, right. So money can buy you any of the five senses. Um, pleasure for your tongue, food, pleasure for your eyes, pleasure for your ears, pleasure for your touch, all of the physical things it can buy you, but it cannot buy you love, it cannot buy you happiness. It cannot buy you knowledge either. You can buy a teacher, you can rent a teacher, you can have the person teach you, but it can't put that knowledge into you. Right. Um, so m you can give somebody money, but when that money is over or whatever he purchased with that money is over, it's gone. You can give a person, a hungry man, food and you've given him some good punya. You've done some good punya. But when the food is finished, he's hungry again. Mm -hmm. So that's supposed to be the lowest form of donation, right? And the Gita also says, by the way, th that it has to be the right time to give a donation, the right person, the right person that deserves it, Right. the right object that you're giving as a donation and the right place. So there's multiple things. I might have, might be leaving out a couple. But for instance, if it is really hot in the southern part of India or Africa and you go there with Land's End or Eddie Bauer winter coats and yeah. you say here and you go there in the middle of July and you start handing out these Eddie Bauer jackets and that too for very rich kids whose parents are living in very... So the time is wrong because you're giving it in the summer. The right. person is wrong because the person doesn't need your gift. The object you're giving, these Eddie Bauer jackets for winter and cold are wrong. And the purpose for which you're giving it is wrong. So you have to think about all these things when you're giving it. So you, you don't want, the gift has to be the right gift to the right person at the right time. Right. And for the right reason. Um, so giving food, I talked about, we talked about money. And the next is, that's for the body. For the mind is love and emotions. So somebody that's starving for affection sometimes can say, you know what? You gave me food yesterday and that's fine. But when you sat here and you just hugged me, right. or put your hand on my head and you showed me affection, to me, I tell you, that meant a lot more than what you gave me as food. This emotion, this love I've been starving for. So love for the mind and affection and attachment in that respect is thought to be at an even higher level than giving something for the body. And intellect is knowledge. 
you know, what you're studying right now, what you're learning. Right. So to become a better person yourself, if you listen to this, that knowledge, that gift of knowledge that I got from my gurus, from the swamis that I listened to, is the best gift I could have gotten. And that karma, when you teach somebody, even Krishna says, is the best karma that you can do. Why? Because you're actually using that knowledge, gaining it yourself first, getting better, and then teaching somebody else in order to become a better person. So that in the fourth chapter of Gita was called Swadhyaya Jnana Yagna. It is a donation of your uh, to in a yagna of this jnana, this wisdom, this knowledge that you acquired for yourself. So you're helping yourself in order to get better so that you can help somebody else. Um, so don't forget, Buddha did that. When uh, Siddhartha was the prince, he was just a prince. He didn't have this knowledge. His father kept him confined in right. his castle and some holy man astrologer had predicted that buddha was going to be one of the greatest saints of all times and leader of men with new religions and the father said absolutely not he's going to be my prince he's going to be the king of this and so in order to prevent that uh, the father king blocked off all exits to the in and out of the castle and said no prince may not be allowed out he brought women in to tempt his young son and uh, allowed him to experience the pleasures of life and food and wealth and silks and horses and archery, taught him all of that. Right. But Siddharth could not be contained. He had to go outside and he uh, stealthily wore the clothes of somebody and went outside and he saw all the suffering and he could no longer bring himself to enjoy the richness of his father's palace. And he ran away. He ran into the woods and for years, this is a fascinating story about how Gautam Buddha, how Siddhartha became Gautam Buddha, what he went through to collect all this knowledge, this jnana, which he then donated to the rest of the world. So many people have benefited from his knowledge that he accomplished and received by penance and very hard work. And so there are multiple people like this throughout history, Moses, um, uh, Jesus. Jesus. And, yeah. Sorry? Yeah, Jesus. I was going to say Christ. Yeah. yeah, Jesus Christ. He did the same thing. Studied for 12 years. He was missing. By the way, this concept of 12 years comes up all the time. Every person that I've read of who became self-enlightened, uh, self-realized, spent 12 years. I don't know why that word. Mm -hmm. If anybody knows, please let me know. But I think Moses went up to uh, the top of Mount Sinai. Jesus was missing for 12 years. Um, Gautam Buddha was 12 years in the woods. Rama was banished. Um, Krishna was away for 12 years. So they all became self-realized after 12 years and then started their own way of promoting this to others. And that's a selfless giving of one's knowledge of how to use this to become self-developed and become ultimately self-realized. So that's what this verse 21 says, that if you do just a little of it, then you get the benefits, but then you die, you go up to heaven, and then you come back. Mm -hmm. When that consciousness starts to again develop desires within itself, you come back to the worlds of going, uh, of, of the mortals, and it's coming and going, coming and going. It's a futile thing like the snakes and ladders game, up and down, up and down, up and down, uh, uh, indefinitely. Whereas if you do it once and for all, selflessly for others, you gain that peace of mind and you are in heaven forever. You become one with Brahman. So that's verse 21, friends. I hope you enjoyed it. This is episode 99 you're listening to. And I really hope that you listen to episode 100. I am hoping to make it really special for all of you. And we'll see you next time on episode 100. Thank you.